Your Creative Push, episode 24. Maybe it's five minutes of your day, maybe it's 10 minutes of your day. If you want to change where you are creatively, you just have to start. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Mikey Burton. Mikey is a part-time designer and part-time illustrator, which adds up to a full-time designing illustrator. He's been working professionally for about 10 years, and he's done a lot of work in that time for clients such as Converse, ESPN, Target, New York Times, Time Magazine, and Esquire, among others. Mikey, that's a lot on your plate. Uh, Tell me what I missed in that intro and uh, maybe give us a peek into your personal life. I don't know if you missed anything in the intro. Um, Yeah, like you said, I'm a designing illustrator. I've probably been working for over a decade now. But uh, yeah, I I just uh, moved to New York City. I live in Brooklyn, New York now. Um, And I'm still doing my thing. I've been uh, working as a, just under like Mikey Burton designing illustration for about six years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. I'm really glad I, you know, don't have a job, a real job. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm still I'm still vibing on that, which is cool. So um, yeah. Now I stalked your website pretty hard uh, a little while back, and you have awesome design up there. But one of the things I was most obsessed with was your that Converse campaign that you did. That looked like so much fun. Can you tell us about that? Uh yeah. Um, Converse approached me a couple years ago um, about just doing like a, a kind of special thing for like they're going to have a pop up shop a couple of different cities mm-hmm. and um, they wanted me to be involved with the one in Philadelphia. Um, so the whole thing was they approached me about like doing like four custom shoes that you kind of like, you know, draw on four pairs of shoes. Mm-hmm. And I like initially I was really like hesitant. I was like, Oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Like most of the work I do is so like digital in nature. True. I don't really do a lot of stuff with like actual like, like pens or pencils. Um, <laughs> And I was, I don't think I was, I don't think I can really do that. I think I can do that at the past. And they're like, oh no, you have it wrong. We want you to do uh, 40 pairs of shoes <laughs> in about seven days. And for some reason, like the challenge sounded funner that way. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of like, I was like, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> um, I think that maybe describes me as a creative. <laughs> I just, That's perfect. I just like a challenge and I like to work and uh, yeah. So it was, that was definitely a fun project. And yeah, it was just, they wanted me to do like kind of like unique design on these shoes. And, you know, I had to draw each pair and it was really fun to get like a pile of like a mountain of shoes to draw on. Cause I, you know, like I said, like 40 pairs is a lot. And, you know, it takes, it's funny how like some would take, like if you have like a child's, like a kid's size shoe, it takes like, you can only draw like one or two things on it. And then you get like a size 14 shoe and it would like take four <laughs> hours to illustrate. It's a much bigger canvas. Yeah. Um, th- there's an awesome time lapse video, and I'll put it on the show notes page at uh, yourcreativepush.com slash Mikey Burton. But um, how many like Red Bulls did you drink there? <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't think I had any Red Bulls. But I that was the other title of the video is Mike Burton. Dr- Mikey Burton drinks a lot of beverages <laughs> because I think I, I don't know how many high lifes and cups of coffee I had in that video, but awesome. There were a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it looks so much fun. That was really, I mean, it was a really like, I think the whole thing with doing that was it was such a new, unique opportunity, even though it was kind of like scary or kind of like, you know, something I could seriously like flub up. Like I was like, I got to do this. Like I'm so fortunate to get such, to do such a weird like project. Like not everybody gets to do this. So going along with that, like when something like like a challenge comes up to you because you said that describes your personality is that you like to take on like a bigger kind of challenge what um how do you get through that how do you get the courage to kind of do it i think maybe that comes from i don't know like just wanting to do like new and interesting work i think it's always something i've done ever since i was in college and like going into grad school uh me and my friends did a lot of like Uh, gig poster work in grad school like back in like I think this was like 2004 Mm -hmm. and it was like that was our first like kind of like self-motivated kind of work and it was always surprising to me because it it yielded like actual work and that was something that always would guide me along the way was just like if you're doing these things that are passionate you're passionate about in your spare time 
they usually lead to something. Um, and I think that's that the challenge, I guess, like the challenge of the work is what keeps work exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, like right now, I feel like I'm at another point in my life where I need to do something new to challenge myself because I think I'm getting, I really like like working for myself, but I'm, I'm ready for that next challenge and to see what the next thing is. And I think the only way that kind of comes around is by doing like a new project or like trying a new challenge or like pushing yourself to do something new. Do you have any idea what you're going to do? Um, I don't know. Like the last time I did it, I just started like, I, I was really, it wasn't like the most creative like idea I'd ever come up with. It was just to draw what I ate every day. Um, and I kept that on a blog for, I don't think I did it even a whole year and it wasn't like a daily even thing. It was just a blog I called, it was called uh, barrel body and I would just draw mm. what I ate every day. <laughs> and I think that, I think the goal was to kind of, um, I was, I was thinking I'd lose weight because I'd be like watching what I eat, <laughs> but it was more yeah. just like me like drawing like fun art pictures of food. Yeah, and uh, it, but it definitely led to like different work and like new client work. Um, like I, I had had like Starbucks on my client list for a long time, and from doing that project, they actually um, had me do like a like a summer like uh, social media campaign with them. So I mean just by trying to do this thing for myself, it kind of led to, you know, new and interesting client work. Um, but definitely it'll be something that I, you know, I push myself to do like daily or weekly or, you know, just something for myself. Cause I think as an illustrator nowadays, that's such an important part of, of being an illustrator is just like having your own voice. And that to me, that's almost like foreign, like, because like I went to design school like design you're supposed to make you're like this like empty vessel that like like the job dictates whatever you're going to make but as an illustrator you need like a like an aesthetic or a style or it's almost like you need your own brand as a person as an illustrator to kind of like sell yourself as an illustrator so i think like doing like a lot more personal projects really helps that helps that along and really gives your your vo- your your work of voice and your client work of voice then too yeah, that's cool. Uh, I think part of art is, you know, finding out who you are and finding out who, like kind of what you stand for. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you feel like that that's something that has always like your voice has always been there or is it something that you kind of um, that kind of develops or is it something that you kind of like find out that you have? I think it's definitely like a work kind of based thing when you first start out as an artist or a designer or whatever you want to call it, like a creative person, I feel like you're automatically going to like look at things and make things in other people's style. Mm -hmm. I think it takes a long, long time before you get to the point of like doing your own style. At least for me, I still feel like I'm defining my own, like I know I I have like a definite style to my work, but I, I still feel like I'm defining that now. And I think it's like a lifetime long thing where you're always going to be developing and changing and like reinventing things and um i know I, I hate to say this but like just looking at like you know david Bowie just passed and like thinking about his career and how much he shifted and how smart he was about all that stuff i think it's just like a lifelong commitment to being an artist and you know adapting to what's coming along does that make sense <laughs> make, yeah it makes a lot of sense and i'd also say like a, a lot of it has to do with kind of like trusting yourself and trusting like what you like and, and being, you know, critical of critical of yourself, but also not too critical um, yeah. in terms of, you know, being able to like kind of shift and pivot. I think, I think the critical thing is a really important thing. Something I really learned in design school was just being critical and knowing things and like being critical of yourself and like understanding a lot of things. Yeah. I think, I think that's why I've got to the point of where I'm at is because I'm very hard on myself. I'm my own worst critic I hate most of my work. <laughs> There's like a handful <laughs> of things all. that I genuinely like, but like I, I look at my work, I'm like, yeah, that's all right. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be doing better work, you know. I think that's like being critical is the best thing you can be as like a designer. Yeah, I think that goes for really any kind of art. Like you, if you're satisfied, then that means like you're not developing anymore or you kind of don't have like a path to develop. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, but it's also... At the same time, it's nice to be nice to yourself as well and not be too hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Don't beat yourself up too much. But um, I think it's I think it's still really important. Um, I'm not that mean to myself. 
<laughs> That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> self love. Um, you said that you you're critical with yourself. What are, what are some other things that kind of um hold you back? Maybe from like when you're when you need to be creative, but you're not quite feeling it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like right now is. I feel like definitely that's what I'm going through a little bit. And I don't, I think I was, I feel like I was much more driven in my twenties. And like, I was like, I'm going to, cause I wanted to be in like a bunch of magazines and work with a bunch of cool clients. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've fortunately got to do that now. And now I'm in a different place where I'm like, well, like, what do you do now? Like, we're like, what's the next step as a, as a human, as a, you know, as a dad, a family, is it to, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like different, like it, cause I'm just getting older and it's changing. Um, and I guess the goal of creativity changes maybe, I don't know. I think that that's completely natural. And, uh, I don't know. It's like we were talking about before. It's like always kind of finding yourself and, you know, it's funny cause you, if you have certain goals, like I want to create this or I want to make this or, you know, in life goals, I want to be at this, this point in life, I want to get married, I want to have kids or whatever. And then, you know, you get to that point and it never quite feels exactly how you thought of it. Cause when you think of it, it's like, that's like your goal. And that's like where you're like standing at the finish line with your hands raised. But then when you're there, it doesn't quite feel like a finish line. You're still kind of in the middle of the race. And it's, yeah, like you said, it's like, which, which path do you go down now? Yeah. It's also like I, I'm living in New York. I'm I'm with somebody new in my life, and like mm. my my life life feels more rich now than it did before. But my like creative life is not. I'm not as worried about it at the moment or something. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's not typically me. I feel like so much of my you know my my twenties were spent like just really like pounding the pavement, doing a lot of work, really hustling. And now I'm just like, I'm just, it's kind of the opposite of that. Like just the values change a little bit. Um, but I'm excited because I feel like I'm at a point where I've hit a certain level in my creativity to like try something completely different. And I'm excited to do that. I don't know what form that takes, but I know it, it's not something that's going to, I know it's, it's scary because it's not something that's going to be provided by a client or necessarily a job or any of that. It's more on me to like actually create something and push it out into the world and kind of stand beside it and see how that works, which is something very foreign to me. Like, cause I don't necessarily do like a lot of self-motivated stuff. I just, I get a lot of, I always got a lot of fulfillment. I think it's just being from like the Midwest and uh, having that work ethic of like a job really can make you feel at one. Um, <laughs> but now it's just like, you know, like thinking about it, like, you know, I need to make work for myself cause that's, going here on out like you know that's where i think fulfillment comes from is like being kind of at one as like an artist and like just okay with the creative process because the creative process is such like a different thing where it's so unsure but like Mm -hmm. being a creative is also kind of this unsure thing because you're always changing and evolving too yeah that's a great answer and um really speaks to just you know trying to make creativity part of your life and and where's the line where is it the things that you create are they based on your life are they based on like this other thing yeah this is i i hope this is a this is inspiring (laughs) (laughs) it's like this is more like oh like design shallow like (laughs) invest in your life yeah no that's okay though i do i do think a little bit about that about when i look at so much of like like pinterest and dribble and all these different things where we're like so like like visually oversaturated now and that might just Mm -hmm. be me being an old man now (laughs) yeah i know what you mean um but like there's like so much and it's like hard to like wade through all that and i think it's like i think it's like over inspiration in a way like how could you possibly need visually inspired and like it almost makes all that stuff seem like kind of shallow or something um but you know i I don't know It's, it's it's interesting uh, you, so you mean oversaturation with um, like inspirational stuff or just oversaturation just in general with imagery? I think like inspiration stuff, like visual inspiration. Like I get a lot out of like podcasts, like listening to podcasts and like um, I'm not just saying that because this is a podcast. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, no I really like like listening to any creative like talk about what they do or their path. 
because there's so many parallels you can draw in anybody's creative path, whether it's a musician or like, I don't know, like Mark Maron had like uh, Penn Gillette from Penn and Teller on there and his like creative mm-hmm. path. Like there's like so much you can like glean from those like instances. Like I think like so much of like being a graphic designer is just like, oh, like, oh, you're a graphic designer. That's like dribble, right? It's just like there's there's like there's like this surface polish to everything. Everybody knows how to make things look really nice now. But there's like something missing with the quality of like the intent of everything is like missing. Everything's just looking more uniform, I think. Or like, but everything's not as unique as it used to be or something. I don't know. Maybe that's not true, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that goes along with, you know, everybody, not everybody, but with this oversaturation of just you see everything and everybody's looking at the same kind of stuff. It kind of all just merges into one. Yeah. And it's it's hard to, you know, kind of distinct yourself or make a distinction for yourself. And I think it goes along with, you know, you got to do what's like what your heart is telling you and not necessarily what your brain is saying like oh nobody's gonna like that because guarantee like somebody will pick up on it and like it yeah totally and uh going along with the the podcasting you know that's the whole reason i did this is i think as you said there's there is kind of an oversaturation of like inspiration and you you know you see an inspirational quote or like an image or whatever um you see who's posting it and it's it's like what's the what's the point of of posting that like it's easy to say the words or read the words but like to take action is is like the whole point of the inspirational words so like one of the goals of the podcast is just to like keep it you know like a short like thing to listen to on your ride home and then like turn it off like turn off all the stuff and just like use that inspiration and actually like do stuff you know that's great um you have so much on your plate like how do you balance your time it's been really hard lately. I think just because I just like I just moved in December. <laughs> oh wow! Like during like right before the holidays. Uh, uh, moving's the worst. And like that's probably also why like I'm giving off this like frazzled like you know work's not everything kind of vibe. Like it's like because mm-hmm. it's just been like I've been moving and like I I still have like so much stuff in boxes and like it's hard and it's hard to like work from home and and like feels like a little bit like comfortable when you don't have everything in a place yet when you're not settled yeah Yeah. but like i i definitely i think the importance of a routine like i think that's the thing that's lacking right now is just having like the daily routine because i i have such a like working from home is like if anybody wants to go work from home it's like it's not as like fun as everybody thinks i'll get to wear my pajamas all day Mm -hmm. just hang out It's it's like this constant like battle between yourself and you and yourself just like don't do the laundry. Don't like, <laughs> don't go watch TV. Don't do all these other things. Right. right. And I think just having like a very strict routine every day, like every day I get up, like I have to, I have to take a shower. I have to put shoes on. Um, I know in the morning is like when I'm going to get, like that's got to be my most productive time of the day. That's usually when I'll do all my sketching for everything. And those, that's a really valuable part of the day. Cause I know my brain only works for like, maybe like four or five hours in the morning and then everything like after lunch is just kind of like just like moving images around or like moving pictures around in the computer and not like as much about like thinking about it you know what i mean yeah for sure i think just know like me knowing about you know knowing that about myself really helps me get things down and like avoids like like riffraff or dilly-dallying around with stuff you know i uh, yeah i can agree completely um i think it is really important to know yourself and know kind of like (laughs) that you know you can only put in a certain amount of time and then after you know x hours then your brain turns to mush or whatever and uh i think there are like two different modes like with writing like a lot of times like it's really hard to just start because you think about just the whole process of it like the the process of editing and you know just all the other stuff that goes into it that it's it's like really hard to just start so if you kind of like take that pressure off of yourself where you're like i'm not going to necessarily like complete this now i'm just going to kind of get started like with the ideas i think that's very helpful yeah totally um mikey who's your greatest inspiration it's it's cheesy to say but i think it's my dad Mm -hmm. um as just as like a a really impressive human being. He just, he has one of the greatest work, work ethics I've ever seen in my life. And that was just translated to me really well and meant so much to me. Mm-hmm. He's like a, and it really bums me out to say this because, you know, he's a third generation jeweler. This will probably be the last generation of the jeweling, obviously, because I'm, I make pictures now. Um, but, you know, he just, he works so much 
and he provided such a good good life for his family and uh you know he still works today he still you know he still loves his work he gets a lot of value out of his work and that was just always really inspiring to me i don't work nearly as hard as it he does i think i think it was just you know the idea of like if you want something good you gotta you gotta work for it and that's always kind of translated into how i approach things i i do just like piles of work and i don't really think about it how much work it is when i was moving i went i, I think I, I started like you find that you get like samples of the magazines you get you have illustrations in mm-hmm. and you like will buy copies of magazines you have illustrations in and i like literally like had just like bank boxes full of like illustrations i've done in the past five years and i was just like why did i do all this work <laughs> <laughs> and it was just it was just kind of insane like it's it was an insane amount of work but it's just i think it's just ingrained in me because that's what i've known and you know i you know he was a craftsman and i mean he is still i'm saying he was he still is a craftsman i see a lot of the parallels when i just do you know quick turnaround editorial work and i really like that's why i really like quick turnaround editorial work a lot but yeah definitely that's you know probably my biggest inspiration cool all right mikey now it's time for the final push and this is where i ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of of someone who needs that inspiration to uh do their work and uh kind of give them that push into doing it okay my my arm is through the microphone (laughs) your arm is all the way through the microphone yes i stretched out earlier so i could put it all the way through so it's thank you so much for that (laughs) um i think my creative push is just that you know thinking about where i'm at is like you just have to start like it doesn't have to be some grandiose thing you don't have to say i'm gonna do this every day this this creative like exercise I would do every day it's just like you need to start today in just a little way like maybe it's five minutes of your day maybe it's 10 minutes every day but that's if you want to change where you are creatively I think you just need to start now and see where it goes like some days it's going to be harder and you're not going to get it done but you know if you just kind of commit to it like I think it can go somewhere and we'll get to you to that next level I think that's where I'm at and that's what I'm going to start doing as soon as I get everything <laughs> unpacked from my apartment. But um, does that make sense? Absolutely. And uh, you can listen to the podcast if you if you need a push. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do need a push. <laughs> Good, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Mikey. Thank you. You can find Mikey on his website, MikeyBurton.com. And you can find him on Twitter, Instagram, and basically everything else, right? On Mikey as Mikey Burton. Pretty sure. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Mikey, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And there you have it, Mikey Burton for you, everybody. Mikey has a special place in my heart because when I set out to start this podcast, he was the first person that accepted my request to be interviewed before I even had a single episode out there, before I had a logo, before I had anything. It was just an idea, and I sent out invitations, and he was the first one to write back and say, yeah, okay, I'd like to inspire some people. And because of scheduling conflicts and all those other things that, you know, happen in life, we weren't able to do the interview until later. But in my mind, he was the first person to say yes. So hopefully he was able to inspire you today, and hopefully you are ready to go do some work. I'd like to give some iTunes shout-outs. Nicole at BBRSummit.com gave us a five-star review and said it's a fantastic show pleasure to listen to rock on beach pb said need some inspiration this podcast is for you as someone who is currently in a nine to five and building a side business finding motivation and inspiration is a constant challenge i am so pumped i found this podcast the rye Cardane said this podcast is great and there are tons of great insights and motivational guests that will inspire you to be better Cole 4589 said, I like the stories that people share. Tap into your creative side. And Rhea Windcaller said, fun, fun, fun. Dynamic podcast. I could listen to the music on episode six over and over again. Got my creative juices flowing and my feet tapping too. And that reference to episode six was a reference to Viora, who coincidentally just came out with a new EP uh, called Emerald. And I highly suggest you check it out. Just search Viora in iTunes and it will pop up. My wife and I went on a road trip this past weekend to Connecticut, and we listened to it over and over again. Can't say enough good things about Fiora, and they also rock their uh, written interviews, so 
sure to check that out as well at yourcreativepush.com slash six. So thank you so much to everybody that left us such a nice rating and review. Um, there's so many that I haven't gotten through them all, and I hope that if you left us one, you'd keep listening for your name. Uh, I'm going through them, but I don't want to <laughs> say, you know, 50 iTunes shoutouts in one episode, so I'm spreading them out. But thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. They are, you know, the reason that we are doing so well. I keep saying it over and over again, but I I just can't stop saying thank you because this podcast has well surpassed my expectations. And uh, I just, I can't wait to, to do more interviews and to keep putting out content for you every single day to keep you inspired and to keep you doing work and to keep me doing work as well. So hopefully today you were able to receive that push. And if not, uh, tune in tomorrow because we got some more for you. Have a great day and get some work done. I will see you tomorrow.